Hello, friends. I'm Arthur Perkins. This is AP Gaming Real. Uh, at the end of last week's show, it appears that some of the players were a little shook at the concept that maybe when they die, they're actually dead. Uh, and several YouTube viewers commentated as well. They were like, my God, I can't believe this. I can't believe that Finley died. The Daka died. And I was like, okay, this is how I shake people up. I teach them that death has consequences. <laughs> no, That's it. don't. Spoonik, thank you for your Twitch Prime sub, sir. You're welcome. Uh, you know, we like to joke around here about Twitch Prime. I'm sure Drummer Boy will mention it at least twice throughout the stream. But, you know, have you ever thought that you guys are great, that Twitch Prime mm -hmm. is great, and that all the people that sub in Patreon, they give me all of this nice money that I then throw at artists as fast as possible? Yeah, the circle of love. Yeah, I wouldn't be able to do this thing that I do above my head with all that artwork up there without your power. It's true. That's it. That's all I got. That Anime is dead. <laughs> Nothing has any meaning anymore. What killed your love of anime, Arthur? Look, man, this season has been some... <sighs> Hot, smelly garbage. Yeah, you know, I mean... Anime is dead to you right as I get into anime? God. I'm sorry, dude. man. I'm Wait, sorry. you're into anime? You're dead I've, to me. <laughs> I've started watching um, Cowboy Bebop because I've never seen it. Oh, okay. All right, that's, that's fine. Yeah, but that's like a good anime. Yeah, I, yeah. well, first off, <laughs> most anime is good anime, you motherfucking hater. But uh, second I, off... I, I think a majority of anime is hot, stinky garbage. Look, that's the majority saying, of like, anything started, is hot, stinky garbage, Dave. Saying I just got into anime by watching Cowboy Bebop is like saying, I just started getting into movies. Uh, yeah, I watched The Godfather. Yeah, how, exactly. How long, how long well, until... first off, Cowboy Bebop is good, but it's not the best thing ever. All right, let's be life. real here. This 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 needs real realism right now. Mm -hmm. How long until um, Drama Boy is running backwards with his arms out like that? Naruto's he won't. Style. He won't. Look, did you know that there there are kids <laughs> today that do that and don't know that it came from Naruto? Are you kidding me? That's yeah. great. I that like that. middle and high or middle <laughs> and elementary school kids do that because it's now in so many things they don't even know where they first saw it you because everybody copied Naruto. Wow. That's it. That's that's what, that's how far we've come, guys. That's how All far I know we've about come. Naruto is that like his son's name is Baruto. Or no, something? it's Boruto. So his what? name that is so fucking stupid. So Boruto <laughs> means know. bolt, and he literally has a bolt necklace. It he sounds cares. like burrito. Well, you know you're a fucking burrito. Yeah. You know what really tripped me up in anime, and this is this is gonna piss off so many weebs ever. But mm -hmm. all right, when, when someone's when like an anime character goes, ah, oh, I see. In Japanese, it's like Naruto or something like that, and it pisses ah, me off. Soka, soka. Yeah, it, it pisses me off when people say it because I'm just like, what? They're talking about Naruto now? No, they're not, because I'm not a weeb, and it hurts me. Hurts Naruto, me really on. Mm, soka, soka, mm, soka, soka. Ah, yari yari doze, za world. Oh. All right, look. Here's my beef with this season, Dave. Mm. Uh, there are a number of really great shows. Maybe. Maybe. Prom so look, here's the thing. Promise Neverland might be an anime style, but it's definitely not a fucking anime, man. Dude, that manga is fucking bonkers. Yeah, man, the fucking anime is wild. They do all these weird shots where you're not sure if it's a camera or you're watching through a person's point of view because it's like poking around trees and stuff and i'm like this is fucking wild man so let, let me t let me tell you if if you've ever read a manga called 21st century boys nope. that fucking manga um wh what's it called again i forget promise neverland promise neverland that comes straight out of the 21st century boys manga style which is to say yo what if yo what if it was fucked yeah <laughs> it is fucked dude Promise Neverland is fucked as hell, but it is less of an anime and more of like a survival horror thriller. Oh, dude, it's, it's, it's fucking it's so wild. It's, it's real bonkers. I don't I don't know how I feel about them making an anime. <laughs> I mean, it's very good. I haven't read the manga, but it's pretty good. The only anime that's worth watching this season is uh, Kaguya-sama. 
Which one's tried, that? Uh, that's the one with, with the two kids doing 300 IQ high school plays where they constantly get wrecked because they outthink themselves. They're trying to get the <laughs> other person to confess to them. And they're constantly like, but wait, what if while he's in the bathroom, I use the six rechargeable batteries that I've drained all the power from and left around the room to swap with his battery. So now he needs to borrow my phone, which is preset to not get the correct weather report so that he won't know that the rain is going to end in 15 minutes. I'm like, this is way too complicated. What the just, fuck are you talking just, about? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You could just be like, all right, maybe we should date at some point. <laughs> It's, it's way too complicated. Quintessential Quintuplets is a good anime, but my beef with it is that the manga right now is fucking awful. The dude literally is just like, you know what, bitch? I fucking hate you. I would never date you. And I'm like, this girl has been by your side since literally the first page of this manga. And you were going to insult her in front of her sisters? You're scum. You're scum. I hate you. I hope you die in a fire. I'm never reading this again. I'm not going to watch the anime. And then you watched it? No. No. I stopped watching it after that point. I'll never watch it again. It broke my heart. It was like that mm-hmm. George Michael song. I'm never going to dance again. But the guilty feelings are on, on the animes. Okay, that's it. What I got, Dave... <laughs> It's good. I'm glad we had this discussion, man. I'm just hearing womp, 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 womp. Just, Look, yeah, I was yeah. trying to avoid the anime talk because I said anime is dead. And then God everyone's it, like, Dave. let's talk about the anime. See? Look, Chad is having to distract themselves to talk about beards. That's where Atomic and Sputnik are right now. They're just hanging Look, out that, in chat. That is an always an applicable conversation. Okay, okay. great. Awesome. Drummer boy, let's bring it back. Let's bring it back to you. I was just talking. Okay, you're muted first off. But I was just bragging about you to some friends. I was like, oh man, here I had a really cool Patreon series. And they were like, I actually want to know more about Patreon. I'm going to use it to make art. And I was like, well, unfortunately he deleted his Patreon page. But I can tell you what I remember of what he did with like polls and uh, periodic payments and they're like wow this is a really great way to do things i'm like yeah i bet i seem super smart for remembering all this stuff i'm regurgitating it to you (laughs) yeah so look drummer boy when you aren't patreoning what are you doing uh pretty much everything else because i'm not patreoning anymore exactly everything in the world either is or isn't a potato it's true uh then i finally finished deus ex yes series Oh, really? Yep. Where do you lie? What's your favorite one? Um, Underrated number two, overrated number one, middle ground remake, the modern version. The modern versions are actually really good. The only like, the only like super downside was in the most, re- in Mankind Divided, the most recent one, like the last one. For some reason, they're like, Hey, put this action figure on someone's desk. Desk. You know what the action figure was? The thief. Uh, assassin. Uh huh. I'm like, you put the worst, the worst you had to offer in this game. Why? Got him. Got him, man. You yeah. got him. But overall, like, that series is great. Yeah. There's, like, there's not a low point, really. Uh, actually, the forced combat in. The boss encounters, yeah. Human Revolution, the forced combat boss encounters are kind of shitty, but... Yeah. Yeah. Uh, So I logged in on your stream, Drummer, while you were playing in that final episode. And there was suddenly... You were, like, breaking into someone's computer and, like, stealing information about some kid's uh teddy bear or something like that and i was like what the fuck is happening yeah right now? there's it was how the, is uh, the this last, a legit just, side quest it was the last dlc mission there's a doctor that went fucking nuts and you the bear is a shop in that specific mission sounds, doesn't, really, doesn't really explain why just kind of is sounds stable man it's a uh, man it's good though. Uh, yeah, but that's that's pretty much me. Just making music and um, hanging out. Hmm. 
Mm. Next next series is Bioshock. Mm. So I'm playing that probably next weekend because this weekend I'm probably going to be making graphics for that because I don't have time during the week. Okay. Interesting. I don't think that Bioshock thing is going to end well. I really, uh, really didn't like Bioshock, but okay. I Bioshock's like Bioshock. one of my favorites. It's a, I guess it's a polarizing series. I mean, the first Bioshock, I think people really liked, and then it progressively got less liked as the series went on. But I like the newest Bioshock and the DLC. Kind of like loops it back. It's pretty cool. That's me. I have to answer a text because my brother and my nephews might barge in the door at any moment and have to tell them to go away. Go away. I'm doing internet fame things, guys. My nephews are very loud and they will just take out all my instruments and start playing them. Excellent. <laughs> Spoonik. Let's do oh, an intro. What's up? <laughs> what? I mean, what is up? I'm asking you. I uh, survived a tornado last week. I heard it. Yeah. I I finally got I got everything cleaned up uh, right before last weekend. Uh, what else? Um, I have been playing a lot of Tetris ninety nine. Oh yeah, really Tell bad me. at it. Mm -hmm. I, the highest I've gotten though, I did get third place once, and I was pretty excited about that. Um, I have a feeling I was playing with a lot of people that don't know how to play Tetris though. Because <laughs> it seemed really easy to get there. What's your strategy? What do you do? Um, so I usually start on random, and then when people start getting close, I switch to KO. And mm -hmm. then when I get to about 50 or better players left, I'll switch to going after people with badges. Mm -hmm. But I found that I never go after the people that are attacking me because for whatever reason, it seems to draw more attackers to me. But I found starting on random, then switching to KO, and then switching to badges, because you gotta get those people with the badges out of there, because the damage that they're doing against you and everyone else is fucking killer. And if you're on, and I'll, sometimes I'll switch back and forth to KO, because when, when you can get those KOs, then it gets you the badges, and the sh damage you do is that much higher. But mm. it's fun man it, it, it's good to like come home from work and just sit on the fucking couch and play that shit for you know 20 30 minutes you don't really have to think about anything um, yeah i can't i've not figured out t-spins yet i mean i know how to do them but like it takes planning to like set up for that shit and that's not me I, I'll, do the, <laughs> I'll do the hold thing i like the hold function that's new to me because i haven't played I guess that's been in Tetris for a while now, but I didn't know that. Wow, um, really? Oh, man. Yeah. It's been I mean, a while since you played Tetris then. Oh, yeah, it's been since probably Game Boy. Yeah, no kidding. Um, but, uh, I mean, I like it. I like Tetris. I always have. Um, but uh, that and... Uh, what the fuck? What was I... What was that RPG I was playing? I finished it. Look. Oh, uh, Lost Sphere. Uh, finish that. I um, gotta ask. It's pretty good. Have you ever seen that College Humor Tetris skit? Oh, I... <laughs> Where he's Lord like, Lord Peace! Lord Peace! <laughs> oh, yeah. <that's> so <laughs> Every time oh, I think of uh, 99, uh, Tetris 99, I think of that now. Yeah. I actually, I just saw that recently for the first time, like maybe a week ago. I had never oh, seen man, it. that shit is old. It's, yeah, yeah, it's been around for a while, but I, I thought it was pretty fucking funny. I think one of those college humor guys ended up becoming like a pretty big actor. He could have been the bad guy in the Ghostbusters remake movie. I never saw the remake movie. Uh, I think you're missing out. I mean, uh, it's the really? Cowboy Bebop of... Uh, really? Sorry, that's because I think Cowboy Bebop isn't as good as people say it is, but it's still good. Mm -hmm. Well, it's it's a case of it's because it was on Adult Swim for so long on reruns. It's a lot. Of, it was a lot of people's introduction to. Well, yeah, but, and I, I, know I heard that the new Ghostbusters movie was hot fucking garbage. No. No. No, I think that, I think it was good. I think it was a solid movie. It's better than Captain they, Marvel. They swapped all the all the male actors to female ones. Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay. People were saying okay, that it ruined their childhood. No, the that's thing, the fucking thing that stupid. pissed me off about <laughs> that movie. That's butthurt dudes being like, oh, no. yeah, that's the dumbest shit I ever heard. That's now, people that they, got mad about Captain Marvel. Look, legitimately, Star Wars Episode One might have ruined Star Wars. Like when I saw Star Wars Episode One as a kid, I thought it was awesome, and when I watch it now, I'm like, this is so dumb. Mm-hmm. Compared to the first three movies, this is pure bullshit. The only thing, the only thing good about that movie. No, this is pod racing. Pod racing, pod racing, and Palpatine in the background just constantly popping up, just being like, "I'm a Darth Lord." No, the 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 the, cur- the criticism that I saw on the Ghostbusters movie wasn't the fact that it was women, and I could give a shit. Whatever, it's women, great. I just heard that. The fucking special effects were garbage. Uh, you know, the CGI didn't look good. The jokes were fucking pandering and stupid. No, I thought the jokes were pretty funny. So uh, the one joke okay. that got me, because I, I watched, I tried to watch that movie, but when they, there was one joke when the guy who played um, the war, was it? Chris Hemsworth. Yeah, Chris Hemsworth. When he was like, you know, he had his glasses on and someone was like, why isn't there fog in your glasses? And he took them off and like, oh, they just make me look smarter. And I was just like, they literally, they literally like, cause the, 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 the phone lady in the, in Ghostbusters wasn't like a bimboed or sexified or anything like that. But this guy was literally just a piece of meat. Like the, like the stupidest blondest bimbo male some like, of his best acting and i say that <laughs> having having clocked both infinity war and thor 3 as being you know in the top five of marvel movies I, I just, he's an excellent anyway, actor just, and him in ghostbusters was fucking hilarious yeah i maybe i'll need to give that another go because it's just for me yeah. it was, uh, but right, let's be look, real i'm not i'm look not it's fine movie. everybody I has mean, different tastes the original ghostbusters movie is one of my all-time favorite movies like I just it's so fucking good and how could it not be with guys like Bill Murray Harold Ramis Dan Aykroyd Rick Moranis Dan Aykroyd is fucking crazy so (laughs) fucking good Bill Murray's character uh, in the first Ghostbusters is is just Bill Murray yeah he's a slime ball yeah he's the he's the worst he's horrible it's like Groundhog Day but even worse He's pretty much like forcing himself on that woman. I, I <laughs> wish I wish all the credits would say Bill Murray as himself. Look, yeah. you're saying at the very beginning where we, oh. where the girl is doing the psychic testing and he's just yeah. like, it's incredible how good you're doing. Oh, oh it's yeah. amazing. And she's getting them all wrong and he's shocking the shit out of that <laughs> other guy. It's great. Bill Murray. Have was you seen awesome. though on Netflix there was a documentary about Bill Murray. Bill Murray. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah so it is so fucking good. good. I have not the heard of this. The, um, the cops it's, and the tambourine. Uh, yes. Yeah. It's, it's literally about how, like, you know, all those stories about, like, oh, Bill Murray just, you know, walks up to somebody and says, no one will ever believe you. And, like, all those Bill Murray stories, it's literally a documentary about like, those stories. Walks into like, a bar and the starts guy, working there because he's what Bill What he Murray. does is he finds the people that originated those, like, rumors or stories and interviews them. Uh, and like they'll provide him with like video footage of Bill Murray hanging out in their apartment in Austin, Texas, playing fucking tambourine with some band, and the cops show up and you know tell him to turn down, saying, "Oh, I, I can't, you know, Bill Murray's here. We're gonna keep playing." And Bill Murray says to the cops, "Come on in, have a drink." And it's fucking amazing. Yeah, and it's only it, like an hour long. It's great. It's, it's it so is great. one of the best documentaries, and I watched a lot of them that I have seen in probably the last five years. It is incredible. It's so good. Have you seen it's Gettysburg just... in the last five years? I want to say I have. Okay. <laughs> well, I will say the Peter Jackson World War One documentary. I saw that a couple weeks ago. That is I haven't really seen good. There's I wish they uh, won't grow old or something like that. Yeah. There's there's so, a. Uh, there's a uh, movie or an IMAX movie about the Apollo program playing right Ooh. now. And I, I've heard it is fan fucking tastic. So I need to see if I can go down to Orlando. Cause I think they have an IMAX and go see it. Cause I've heard. I love, it. I love talking on it. <sighs> hey fellas, anyway, we should probably about. play some role playing games. Whoa. We're <laughs> not even through me. introductions yet, brother. Calm down. Uh, I haven't even told you yet that uh, we actually have to wrap up a little early tonight. Just to, <laughs> just to put some bees in your bonnet. <laughs> Uh, Sp- Sputnik. Sputnik. Yeah, you got anything else? 
That's all I got. Oh, um, I was telling, I don't know if you were uh, here when I was telling the other guys, but uh, in May, I'm going to be in Italy for a couple of weeks. So I was not here for that. You won't be seeing me. All right, we got like a month and a half. And uh, one, one day in one day in uh, April, also, I won't be able to be here because I'll. Be hey, ready. do you want to play D and D with us, Sputnik? I mean, like, I know you. I, know you're really <laughs> I was I was waiting on you to fucking show up. Actually, <laughs> that's right. Because uh, we we started late because Dave didn't do the time change right. Wait, wait. I'm gonna point in the correct direction. Yes, fucking got it. I remember my camera's reversed. Got it. That guy up there. No wait. All right, I gotta. Nope, I'm moving my hand the wrong way. It's not my fault that one side of the planet decides that, yo, the cow, the milk's going to sour if the cows don't get up at the right time. (laughs) This is really hard to do. You're nailing it, Arthur. I I really don't think so. I feel like my hand was twisted at a weird angle, and when I tried to untwist it, it was like I was trying to pat Atomic on the head, and I was not anyway. Big Daddy 911. Yeah, thanks Thanks for that stuff. You yeah. wouldn't be the first person that that sandpaper texture. So many people love. No, I don't want to touch room. your head, man. Oh, dude, I I'm not allowed to shave my beard because my wife hates that feeling. Oh, it's just top of my head. I mean, I don't care. I guess it's my turn. Sure. All right, I have a cat, and uh, nice. I got my disability stuff went through this week, so I got that. That's like the best news I've gotten in probably nice. a decade. So I've been doing that, and I mean, playing the division, some Warcraft stuff, and streaming that, and uh, putting models together, and that's been that's pretty much it. Let's play some fucking D and D. Dave, let's do your. I'm streaming again, so that's fun. Oh uh, shit! I don't know what my schedule will be. Really? Like, probably, probably a couple hours a night, but that's about it. Let's play some D and D. No, we don't have it. I mean, all right, drummer. This is the last thing I'm going to say before we start playing. Do not watch Captain Marvel until you watch Infinity War, or you'll fuck your life up. Yeah, I, I have don't. no plans on. I I need to see from Civil War onward before I can even touch uh, Captain Marvel. The, Marvel was fun. You I could skip like, Ant Man and the Wasp technically, but I actually feel like it's a really good movie. It just doesn't really yeah. tie into anything. The first yeah, Ant the first Ant Man. So, so the best well, thing the I first Ant Man was Marvel. below average. So the the best thing I can say about Ant Man and the Wasp is Paul Rudd is fucking amazing because there's an there's an interview of him out there being like people people are angry that you that marvel made ant-man pathetic and it's like marvel didn't make ant-man pathetic i made ant-man pathetic and i'm just like yes oh my god paul rudd best person ever yeah ant-man and the wasp was much better than ant-man it was a above average i I thought they were both really good Mm, no, Captain Marvel like, is slightly like below Thor average. Ragnarok, if, if we're being I honest. mean, look, Thor Ragnarok is a fucking masterpiece of storytelling. Nothing can get much worse than Iron Man Two. So, really, why do you hate Iron Man? I never get this Iron Man Two hate. <laughs> and then the boys never played D and D this. <laughs> I just it didn't hit me at all. Just like. The Look, there are movie. definitely ma- way worse Marvel films than Iron Man 2. That's true. Incredible Hulk was bad. Incredible Hulk? With, uh, Iron what's Man his face? Like- Iron Man 1 is a fucking legend. <laughs> Why are you doing that? <laughs> I know Man you're full of did. shit, but it just, it literally <laughs> sets me on fire. I don't even consider Incredible Hulk to be in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. The Hulk is not the same. The actors aren't the same. They bring like one guy who is a background character into the MCU. Nick yeah. Fury doesn't even show up until the end of Iron Man. Iron Man is the start of the MCU. Iron Inc- Man 1 is great, which makes Iron Man 2 so disappointing because the villain is so forgettable. What? Like, well, no, the I villain is great. Mickey Rourke as well. No, no, not Mickey Rourke. <laughs> Justin Hammer is fantastic. He, when he's up on stage, he's like, woo! don't need dancing girls for this marines and i'm like that that is who i want to be my bad guy i I want this jackass the movie was okay but it was coming up coming from the first one people had a lot more expectation like by itself it's not bad it's just not as good as the first one was Mm. which is for me i'm telling you it's like x-men three levels bad all right we need more justin hammer like (laughs) that's that's what we need in phase three justin hammer comes back as a new bad guy Hammer tech? Hammer yeah. tech. Hammer tech. That's one of my favorite scenes, the missile. Stink. Yeah, he's like, it's the ex-wife. I'm going to fire it. Everybody stand back. <laughs> Just... 
He first just, just hits the suit and falls off. He's like, hammer deck. Yep, that's one of the best things. All right. All right. Look, Dave Dave is literally vibrating with energy that we get started. <clears throat> so oh, man, I'm, like, I'm, I'm, I'm worried about, like, we'll play, we'll get into our characters because we haven't played in a while, and then you'll just be like, <laughs> fucking good night, motherfuckers, and then we'll be like, hmm. That has literally <laughs> never happened. <laughs> Wake up in a mountain. There's a familiar lamper. No, that is. I See mean, next week, everybody. That's the that is the beginning of this show. If I'm if I re recall correctly, correct you me if I'm wrong. You all caravaned your way east yeah. through the pass uh, from Border Town to Fort Cuso. You were ambushed by familiar looking halflings. No, who's... we actually traveled. We traveled. What? Yeah, we were yeah. caravan. We you were, were with the caravan. You got ambushed. Mm -hmm. In the canyon, no, we yeah, but then we died, went to the mountain, then we went back. We decided where the next starting point would be. No, I don't recall that. We look, we, let me get through the recap. You're going too fast, <clears throat> Dave. Calm down, all right. You were ambushed by halflings, you began the slaughter time. All of your horses died, everyone got spread out. There were tons of quips from Daka and Kelly who were like, Haha, hoo hoo. Finley was like dodging every single shot. It was actually super, super bad for me. Like, I could not believe these incredible roles I was not getting. Like, just the truly awful roles. And then he ducked and hid under a wagon in a series of metagame actions when a red dragonling <laughs> fell from the look, man. Let me let me tell you something, by the way. I don't know if you ever checked the YouTube comment section, Sputnik, but one guy was like, Arthur, you own Sputnik so bad for his metagaming. And I was like, I did? When did I do that? And they were like, here's a six-step process about how you warned him not to metagame. And then he kept doing it, and you warned him again. And then the red dragon followed him around. And I was like, I didn't know I was doing that because he was metagaming. I was just doing that because he looked tasty. And I usually don't. I'm usually pretty good about not metagaming. I don't. I don't know what happened, but whatever. It, look, bad. no one wants a uh, you know a half dragon veteran to drop on top of them with a flaming sword and stab them to death. Yeah. Uh, this Dude, is not a I thing got, that people want. I got fucking so beat up. I didn't die. <laughs> yeah, yes, you did. You I was like took a so many hits. Uh, we revived you twice, I think. Kelly, I, I took like over a hundred points of damage. That yeah, yeah, that's crazy. Kelly entered into an honorable one-on-one -on -one duel. In the process, Finley decided to sneak around behind the dragonling. Uh, when he got about ten feet away, the dragonling instantly reacted, despite having not seen Sputnik. Uh, through mechanics not yet understood, Meta Sputnik. <laughs> I assure you, it's not metagaming. Sputnik <laughs> ended up bleeding on the floor, and then, as the party continuously revived him, he was eventually just dispatched and killed. But the players did not snap back in time at that moment. Sputnik, uh, through Finley, lay dead. Daka, running away from the enemy now that uh, the duel had been broken, was chased down and killed. Agram alone remained alive at the end of the fight as Kelly looking at his comrades, had some very serious, you know, I, religious... I the jar for Agrim, though. I had him down to, like, 1 HP, right? <laughs> yes, he was at, like, 1 HP. There you go. I just want to get... I feel like player. everybody loosened the jar on that one. He had to take a lot of damage. Dude, you, took your guys' rolls were horrible. I did not do any damage to that man. Yeah, there were some very <laughs> bad <laughs> rolls to hit him. You were hitting him in the back of the head with a frying pan the whole time. Oh, it sick. made him seem like he was really, really quite a badass enemy, and he super was not. I mean, I don't want to undersell he him. He didn't, did... touch, he didn't touch me once. Yeah, that's true, but he also didn't time. try to touch you once. No, we had a duel, and I he mean, was fucking going hard. Look, he didn't hit me. What you know? What happens when you put an immovable rock next to an immovable rock? Yeah, they just, they just don't move. Up on each other like no, two they times. don't because they're unmovable. They just don't do anything. No, Rorik climbs up on them and puts his hands <laughs> on his hips. <laughs> <laughs> As a dramatic wind blows through his hair, he says, "Yeah, I have an angsty story of glory and honor." Funny seeing you here. I just saw rocks and I like to climb them. Now, if I recall, you guys died at the end of the episode and that was it. I don't remember mm. any of this snapping no, forward I be, shit. I might be getting things mixed up with what we did before we... The one with the yeah. incubus. I think we might have had a discussion no, about it, but I don't think we actually... Yeah, I, I mean, we ended and you guys had right. died. Uh, right. Did you level up? No. No. No, no leveling no. up. No, we're like 3,000. Okay, that was the other party. Yeah. Uh, okay. 
That was the Tuesday show. They leveled up. They might be getting experience faster than us by the sound of it. Uh, no. Definitely yeah, we're not. still 30. The last episode didn't even have a battle. You guys yeah. are like constantly like, mm, I would love to kill anything. Aardvark, <laughs> some peasants. Who, who do we have to chase down? I was like, all right, random battle. A gladiator shows up and engages you. And you guys are like, two rounds. We got this bitch. And I'm like, okay, all right, fine, whatever. I don't even care. <laughs> Look, man, I will knock out the entire proletariat for some fucking XP. I'm the shit. proletariat? I don't think you can fight the entire proletariat. Maybe fucking one on just, one. No, we only have to fight 3,000 XP's worth of proletariat. Uh, the rest of... That's Most a of lot of proletariat, because they do not give that much XP. The rest, the rest. Most of our battles are just me and Agram shooting arrows into the sky. And me standing there. <laughs> no, Kelly's nothing. standing there, like, swinging, and then... Finley taking like the the killing shot because he's a damn uh, look drummer boy. Don't think of it as us uh, missing. Think of it as us providing suppressing fire. Mm -mm. If, uh, okay. Aim you for the stars ready? and you might or aim for the moon and you'll you miss and just <laughs> something. Keep going. Keep going. As That's you all fun. exit the mountain, uh, you all arrive outside at the same time, <clears throat> as you always do. Uh, you know, in a few moments, the familiar light will be coming as the old wizard, whatever he is, dude, arrives to question you. How much XP do you think this guy's worth? Listen, guys, we need to have a very frank conversation here. What happened previously? I don't know if you remember young Finley, but when you expired... We didn't reset straight away, and that worried me. The light and I shines think... over your group. Hello? Is anyone? And then, rather than the light going up as it normally does, it disappears. Mm -hmm. I just put my finger up like this. <laughs> it's like, rather than us resetting, I think it's because uh, when you died, I think it's because of you infuriated my deity. I think the gods are connected to this, and I think it's in our best interest not to anger them any further. Now, I've made my commiserations to Goose and Guff, but I would highly suggest we don't go out of our way to break any more uh, pledges to gods. At least not to ones we're connected with remotely. Well, I mean, he's not my god. Yes, but when you did what you did, there was a distinct feeling that washed over me. And that feeling then led into you perspiring. And <laughs> I was sweaty. What? Well, I have a feeling that we need to be very careful about the gods that we annoy if we want to be able to find out what's stopping this curse and not just get thrown into some sort of holy hell where there's no afterlife for any of us because that scares me more than having to reset another thousand times i mean either way boys we can definitely tell that our situation has changed mm -hmm. i mean the two of you agrim and finley can definitely or sorry doc and finley can tell that it's changed uh because Right now, uh, uh, Kelly is wearing some huge fucking gauntlets that have like orange hair coming out the end of them. You have what? no, and, and, he, and he's got the dragon sword. What? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah he's he fucking can't. strapped. Oh, yeah, he's yeah. strapped. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, you took that shit off the enemy. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, so. he, he's wearing a small town's worth of value on him right now. Mm -hmm. Finley, you're having some very serious uh, feelings about this. You know, you're just like, oh, look at all that money he's got. Well, I'll just wait till he goes to sleep. <laughs> I mean, we he's got some he 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 money on him, right? You know, if you take the, the gauntlets off of him, he also doesn't have the money anymore. He's just going to sleep with him on now. Yeah, you just take them off. No, well, I mean, I'm not going to... You give him a teddy bear to hold as you pull the gauntlets off, and then he clutches <laughs> the teddy bear. Yeah, as he unsnaps the, the things, he just... Oh, wait. 
as, as he explains. slowly pulls the Velcro off to not wake the sleeping half off. Yeah, <laughs> let me tell you about all that uh, medieval Velcro technology. <laughs> yeah, just gotta go to the Velcro guild, come on. <laughs> His uh, is my thing still. You basically just randomly decide shit. For oh him. yeah, of course. Okay. Right. I mean, Fucking you you chose that. Let's Don't worry. Ahead. Next time you get a thing, you can choose to have it be even worse, or you could take one of the new traumas. So here, here here's something that I did read in the comments. Meta gaming. <laughs> um, I suggest that we spend some money and time in this world actually relaxing to remove true. these. If you uh, spend 100 gold and spend one week relaxing, you will gain one month of not being afflicted by your traumas. Oh, and, that, well, and, and that month apparently is like... That's a real month, month for you all. Yeah. Based on so your like, internal clocks. Mm -hmm. So here's the thing. We know... I mean, we know we're not going to be able to make it to Kuso before. I mean, unless we have some way to get there super quick, we're not going to be able to make it there before shit goes down. Yeah. So, so that could be fun in itself. Yeah. Yeah. Just pull up some chairs and just watch. Just watch the siege. Just be like, oh, this is, this is entertaining. Party for a week, watch the world be on fire, and then try to put it out. Yeah, exactly. Hey, That's look, the more, the more it burns, the more people are willing to pay to put it out. I mean, it's a business opportunity. It's true. Uh, so let me ask, what are you going to do with that money that you will not get to keep every time you die? Cross that bridge as we get to it. I lo you know, the, look, there are many small problems with this campaign, mostly related to uh, all of my surprise encounters are no longer surprise after the first time, uh, which makes them considerably easier. But one of the best ones is that money essentially has no value. Yeah. So I was I was actually sure. thinking, like, can you attune to a bag of holding nope. that can hold all our money? No, <laughs> but you could pay a wizard to create an attunable bag of holding. I've yeah. even been working one up. It's called the Bag of Scolding. Uh, what it does is whenever you put money into it, it starts a weekly budget based on how much you have. And if you spend more than what you should be, the bag will tell you to stop. It also makes sure you brush your teeth at night and, uh, and put on clean underwear in the morning. And it, says, it says, I'm not angry with you. I'm just I'm just disappointed. Yes. <laughs> this is a real magic item I'm working on for one of my other campaigns. Nice. Where I'm a player. I want to invent this bag to give it to oh another player because they are so bad with money. Man. But I was actually thinking it, we should actually pull uh, uh, money yeah. as a party. So I that mean, when we've been collectively biased. Yeah, 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 yeah. You, you currently right now have no money because you're standing. Well, I mean, you have like 25 starting, gold. Starting cash. Yeah. Dave's Star gonna be like, no, I have more money because I'm special and I bought my equipment. Yes, Dave. Actually, no, I, I probably have less money than most people if I bought my own equipment. I have 26 <clears throat> gold pieces at the start. You have so. one more gold than most people would. Yeah, yeah. I have like 25. Huh. Where are you going? Okay. Yeah, anyway. Um, right. So what's the plan, boys? Do you wanna do you wanna maybe adventure till we get a cart and ant and armor and that sort of stuff? I mean that and would then, just be essentially, you know, our de facto restore point of what Yeah. yeah. Ponderock. Yeah. Post Ponderock, I've got it here. Mm -hmm. And um after that we can uh party it up, maybe. And see if we can remove the stuff, or do we want to continue with the Fort Cuso stuff? Well, I mean, either way, we're going to have to figure... I mean, we have to rethink our Kuso plan because we're not going to make it. Well, we can, Short of being teleported there or something, we're not going to be able to make it in time. We can really fuck up those half things now because we know where they're at. I mean, unless we just straight up get some horses and fuck off on our own, not with the caravans so we can move faster. I mean, but even then, in order to get said horses, I mean, we would have to still do the Bondarok thing. And this is why I think that we started, we, we we went to that town just before because we were talking about how we're going to fuck up these halflings. Right. That's why I remember this because I remember we got there before the halflings and we decided to wait. We got there after the halflings. Yeah, she kicked him out that morning. Yep. <clears throat> no, I mean, this is, this is why I remember because we arrived there beforehand. No, you arrived was... too late to get to them. Yeah, they had already gone. They had already left. The first time you arrived, they stayed because they were interested in you. They were interested in me. Uh, no, they were they were interested in, they were, they were interested in DACA because they tried to break into his room in the middle of the night and ask him some questions. 
And then I hung one of them out a window. Y- yes, I remember. It was quite vivid. Mm. <laughs> uh, that was a good time. Do we snap then to post Bondarok? You guys are crossing the stone bridge and being interrogated, and Sputnik is playing with his Gleemo metal. That's my vote. It's because that's what we have yeah. the cart, we have the ants, we have money. All and we our, have the play drama or whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, um, the first significant event that happens, I believe, is that uh, you make it to the village where Ardvark resides later that day, right around noontime. Uh, Ardvark sees you all coming, uh, and he's like, hey, 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 guys, fortunes read? Arcane spell components? What do you think? Come on, come to my shop. I'm a great, great and powerful uh, spellcaster. You know? Does he sell okay. potions and shit? You keep you keep walking past me? No? Not stopping? Okay, all right. I'm, I'm going back. We have potions in our inventory class. We, we went to a shop last time. There was just like books and shit, right? Yes. Yeah. I okay, remember. then we just ride past. He had like weird, uh, like, warlocky shit. Okay. Weird liquids, drugs. Yeah. Yeah, getting involved with Aardvark always ends kind of poorly for us <laughs> well i didn't poorly for those two i mean you and i were fine well, uh, we uh, freak him out though but whatever <laughs> you could be like i'll predict <laughs> that, your future that, Ardvark. that's our week of uh you just tag him just bring him along and just fuck with him the whole time yeah. <laughs> we spent 100 gold to fuck with him for a week <laughs> <laughs> i mean you paid him 100 gold to come with us so yeah. i mean that would that technically falls under that category it's entertaining All right. Don't so insult quick. people that don't like tieflings, Aardvark. <laughs> real quick, what is everyone's gold total post Bondarot? 200. Yeah. Uh, yeah. If my, let's see, this is... Fuck, I think mine was like 180. Can you make us, uh, we have a group doc, right? Group inventory? We need to, we should just make a spreadsheet for the fucking money now. Fuck, it's so hard to keep track of. So I'll just put here post Bondarot. Um, and we'll put a total of gold that we have as a party. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, that worked. All right, so I had 315. <clears throat> Are you putting that on the Google Doc? No, I'm putting it in a group inventory handout that we have. Oh, uh, okay. All right. How much does, what do you have, Drummer Boy? Uh, we said 200 ballpark last time. I well, that was, so you got to keep in mind that you have it ponied up the money for uh finley's ring right because we were, we went back before that so no the ring we got in the big town we didn't right. get it in one you haven't bought the ring in this we haven't yeah that's what i'm saying you haven't bought the ring so that money that you that everybody oh. ponied up for the ring you have because we got that in a different yeah. timeline so i'm saying so yeah. i've got a, I've got a so this is post selling the orb and the other um magical scroll which was about 800 900 gold or something like that yeah. and then i asked him to give me plate armor as well and he said yep for 100 gold or whatever it was or 300 gold or something Mm -hmm. and then we all chipped in for that and then at the end we had about 200 each out of it yep if i remember correctly so at least i know that everyone here would have at least 200 gold to them but then you bought some like um we we also ponied up to buy like a the carriage and stuff which was what probably like 100 gold it's like 75 gold per horse or something, right? I don't think it was that much, was it? Look, I'm okay uh, with just saying that you guys have a pool of 800 gold right now for everybody yeah, who's good with we that. Can figure out. Because yeah, I feel like right. we keep we'll going around this over and yeah, over yeah. again, but 800 is fine. We'll say if you guys go post Bondarak, that's where we're at. Okay. Uh, if you don't want to, you know, go to the watchtower uh, and you're not going to stop in the small town to help the guy with his basement problem, I think we should help with the basement problem. Yeah, because we, oh, we had those, well because we had those gyms that were well, no, that that was after we released the dude, wasn't it? Yeah. So yeah, we have to release that dude in order to get the gym. Yeah, so. I, I realize that. Yep, yep. Unit. Not worth doing that. We uh, can't fight him yeah. yet. So. Yep, that's a good there point. Was, there was nowhere else that we did we miss exploring anywhere in that. Nope. Mm. You got you got every nook and cranny except if you wanted to fall into the death hole. Right. And I that doesn't sound I already did that once, so <laughs> I try to avoid death holes. Yeah. <laughs> Me too. 
I have a 100% survival rate versus death holes. Uh, I only jump into death holes if I'm playing a space marine, so... Um, uh, I see. Got it. Yeah. Uh, then shall we cut to the day of the storm? You arrive mm -hmm. early, uh, yeah. way earlier than I think you've ever been in uh, this small town. I don't know if I ever gave it a name, uh, but it's where Brienne Leaves Bar mm -hmm. is. You did, I believe... Uh, uh, ba, ba, ba. I thought it was in our notes somewhere. Well, if you get it, let me know because for yeah. some reason I don't have it in my. I accidentally deleted my notes and had to recreate them. Oof. Uh, yeah, you're you're at the town with Brienne Leaves Bar. Uh, you, you pay over two silver to the guards who are trying to shake you down for some bribe money. Mm -hmm. Uh, and you you know you're here. What do you want to do? You know that there's a brothel, some small shops. Uh, and there might be some halflings at Brian Lee's bar, the lazy archer. So do you want to follow up with these halflings? Because they kind of came in and fucked that shit up last time. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I, I tried to stop them, but they kept on fucking us up. I, I, I think I played it wrong. Mm, no, you played it perfectly correct. It's just that your party kept killing the halflings in between there. And well, yeah. You were like, I mean, stop, I'm with you. And then you were like, okay, I'm going to not come with you. I'm going to struggle. And then Ingram was like, all right, I just shoot the guy. And well, you were like, fair, oh, really? Fair. Yeah, you guys are on our side, huh? Yeah. Fiddley's like, no, really, we're on your side. And they're just like, mm -mm, Well, no. the point when I did that, I already had two arrows sticking out of my shoulder, so he was not in the mood for negotiations. <laughs> well, actually, so let, That let's... sounds like a you guys problem, not a me sure. problem. So, yeah. so I know they were looking for someone, but they wouldn't tell me who. Yes. So I, say... I want to try to get that information out of them. I want to know who they're looking for. Okay. Does me and Finley have like stealth skills, right? Oh, I got stealth. Um, I say we tail them. I have decent stealth as well. It's I really mean, true. like they're going to start talking eventually. So we just follow but them. But I've also why got, don't, why don't you I've guys also try got, to join got, them? Well, that's the thing. Like, I've got really good persuasion as well. So maybe I, I think I may have tried to persuade them before, but failed the role. But I think it, I, I think I want to do that again. I, I really want to figure out who they're looking for because it sounds important and it sounds like a very good um, financial opportunity. Yeah. Why don't I mean, you guys try join them and me and um, me and uh, Agram can still go to the cart and do the the salt stuff. Okay. I'll actually go with. Uh, I'll go with Finley because they seemed interested yeah. in me last time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. I won't let them know that we're like in the party together, but you can be like, yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll you go guys, get a drink by myself. If you guys can yeah. get in with them or whatever, I mean, if you could not even necessarily financial opportunity, but maybe they might have some type of, I don't know, information broker or something. Like somebody who knows some goings on might be able to get some leads from whatever, whatever's going on. All right. And before we do that though, did we want to try and like, thrift some extra magic items from this guy the tower you're in the wrong town for that yeah wasn't this We're not there. no, no this is not border before. town this is, this before. is before oh this is we went we went from here to the border town got uh, out of the caravan and then went towards fort Cusa. got it all right i thought that was all the same town anyway no. all good. yeah we're a little little before that um yeah i mean i'm fine with that it works um because that could potentially you know, bypass that whole ambush in the whatever thing, and then we can see how far that caravan thread goes. I mean, they might have some really cool story plot lines we could follow too. Yeah. So. Well, they fun. also summon Look, the dragonling or whatever. So you motherfuckers, let me tell you about story plot lines that you haven't followed. There are <laughs> so many branches where I'm just yeah. like, okay, they don't care about this. Just gonna tuck it away. Let's see what they will follow. I still want to go back and find out what happened to the first town that got attacked. Got yeah, right. yeah, that's what. Like, if we're gonna party for a week and get rid of our traumas or whatever. I we do it in that like town. There, yeah. We, yeah, just, yeah. we just go on a tear. We just go on a tour. Look, AP, it's like when you look at your pantry, it's got tons of food in it. You're like, man, there's nothing to eat. And then you, know, you just keep going. I mean, obviously, this is the will of the Steins Gate. Out. I understand. Yeah. We need um, a microwave to send us back in time. We got it. <laughs> yeah. You don't need a microwave to do dog, that. Man. You just need a knife to the neck. All right. Um, so how... How far are we from the uh, that first town, like distance-wise? Uh, really like time-wise, if you could bring time up that, wise. Okay, if you could bring up the map. 
I will. Um, we're I mean, in, where you guys are on the map, right? We're up. No. I'm not. Up I'm on here. like a black grid. Yeah, we, we're like we're like up here, oh, right? There it is. Okay. This town. Uh, this is being this weird. is, this is a Elven town. Yeah, and it's this one up here. Yeah, it's yeah, this that's one. where we are. And then the next one is the one where we got the caravan. This one here is the. Uh, this one here is where we got the extra. That's items. correct. So yeah. uh, it's. Limia was that first town. One so day, pretty... two day. Uh, this is. These are connected, so they're literally like several minutes apart. And yep. then it's uh, a day and a half to two days back to Flemia. Uh -huh. uh, so two, three, four. It's like four days. Hard travel back to Flemia. Yeah. And that's where the halflings are? No, you're in the place with the halflings right oh, now. Oh, okay. Well, that's what I thought. I mean, we can, yeah, we can it sounds like you guys are, have a bunch of plans that are slightly chaotic and getting crisscrossed. Yeah. But... We're just trying to come up with some threads to follow. I mean, I'm all for doing the halfling thing. Well, let's... That means. I don't mind the pre-planning, but let's talk about the here and now. What is the immediate plan? I like the idea of the party splitting up and you guys following those. Me and Finley those going to Brandleaf's bar. Yep. Yeah. And, and then myself and Agrim will just do what we did last time, basically, for Batum. What you did last so, time was go to go to Brandleaf's bar. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. So like, everybody's we'll, we'll going do... to Brandleaf's bar, but the but other we'll... two are going to follow the halflings, and you guys are just going to get a room. We will enter the bar as two separate parties, no affiliations. Yeah. No affiliations. The idea being that they will either follow or join them, um, whatever happens. And um, at that point, then we, me and Agrim will continue as we were last life, which is you know go to the thing, do a little thrifting, get on the caravan and take the caravan yeah you yep. will need to go to a different town to do that but yes yes that, but that's yeah. what i'm saying like we'll follow the same path there yeah. uh okay so you are physically splitting the party up then yes yes mm -hmm. we are very well We're let's breaking do the it. first rule <laughs> uh you enter brand leaf's bar uh, I love the idea, by the way, that the chunky boys are going one way and the skinny, s s squishy <laughs> boys are going the other. Pretty tall and chunky. I'm average. I'm actually, I'm not too squishy anymore. I oh, am. Yeah? What are you at? 28. Oh, how bad. much your AC? 15 right now. <laughs> yeah, it's still squishy. <laughs> when, when you get into the 50 range, then AC doesn't matter anymore. Mm. <laughs> I disagree. <laughs> So as you all enter, uh, you hear the sound of halflings burbling uh, in common this time, saying something. Uh, you catch a quick phrase like, oh, yeah, I heard about Kugate. Very bad. And the other one goes, oh, I seem to be coming down with a bit of something. Uh, and then Brianleaf comes from behind the bar. She looks exasperated and says, ah, welcome, gentlemen. This is the lazy archer. <clears throat> We are uh, a bit booked up, but if you would like some premium rooms, I have some space available. Just the four of you? Uh, no, we're going in separately, Arthur. Oh, so which party is going in first? Uh, that would be the, the halfling okay. infiltration party. Just the two of you? Uh, Still yeah. boys. Yeah, just, just drinks for now. Okay, well, uh, we have some nice cider on tap for a reasonable price. Do I, like... If we had something really good last time, I'll order that specifically by name. Okay, all right. Uh, yeah, she says, we did have something good, I thought. Yeah, so she says, ah, oh, well, <clears throat> I uh, I actually do have that in stock. I'll, uh, I'll Wonderful. Get, get it pulled out for you. Uh, it's my favorite. Some of the halflings are looking at you, and one of them does the Aragorn thing where he's in the corner with a cloak, and he takes a long pull on a pipe while staring at the two of you and kind of like nods at the rest of them. Um, they knew Thieves Can't, correct? That's correct. Uh, many or all of them appeared to <clears throat> know Thieves Can't. Uh, I'm going to do the Thieves Can't version of What's Up. All right. Uh, it's like this, yeah. The... A different halfling than what happened last time, but a different halfling approaches you. Mm -hmm. uh, he's slightly taller than you. Um, She's wearing like all dark green clothing. You feel like it wouldn't be out of place in a in a forest as like a trapper. Mm. Uh, a lot of kind of almost felt quality. Looks like it's pretty nice. Uh, big cloak, like some sort of shoulder boards things to make it extend out. Nice tunic and pants. 
it does look like this dude is strapped with knives, though. Knife belt, knives under the arms. He's got, like, a, a long knife on his back that's practically like a short sword. He's look like really closely. His hat's made out of tiny little knives. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> ah, friend. Welcome. Wow. Oh. Uh, oh. I see you speak the same language as us. Why don't you come sit at the table? We're all brothers here, after all. Really, oh. we're more like sons of the same mother. Oh, so I'll look at the bark and be like, can you transfer my tab to um, the tape? How does that work? Does she, that looks at, she looks at one of, the, <clears throat> one of the halflings, the guy who basically was the boss last time, and he nods. He does the up nod. Uh, ah. She says, of course, I'd be happy to bo uh, both of your companions on that coin. Fantastic. This she is, rolls uh, her eyes afterwards as she turns around, but puts like three more drinks in front of Daka. Yeah. So this is uh, this is my friend here. He'll be joining me if that's all right. So one of them turns to you, Daka, and says, are you the chosen one? The one we're waiting for? No. It's too bad. We were waiting for someone like you. Someone to help free us. Is his name Aardvark? <laughs> <laughs> I was just gonna fucking I don't, say that. I don't think that's a name. I think that's a creature. It'd be like naming somebody Dog. Or Antlion. Or Umber Hulk. They could be the one. If Possibly. someone asks you if you're a god, you say yes. <laughs> you know what? Last night, the, the, there were some cops that were like, are you a paladin? <laughs> the party member was like, yes. And they're like, being a paladin is illegal here. You're under arrest. <laughs> 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 it was so hilarious. They were like, how do you prove he's not a paladin? Someone was like, I've never seen him do a good thing in his entire life. <laughs> Uh, so I'll, I'll say to uh, uh, the the guy talking to us. Uh, so if we join you, can we uh, can we learn more about this uh, this chosen one? Oh well, look, your friend's a little outside of our wheelhouse, but <sighs> he's quite fine. He mean he he's no harm. He he he's a friend of ours, if you know what I mean. Oh really. And I say in Thieves' Camp. Yeah, yeah, no, no, they're you catching can trust him. Yeah. Yeah. Look, friend. I just look there and, like. I don't know that we can trust you just coming in off the street. Who knows whether you're working for the magnate or anything like that? I've never heard of any magnate. It's literally the name of the government of the country that we're currently in. <laughs> well, I mean, I've never heard of the government. I've never heard of yeah. I, I, we recently came out of a mountain. You wouldn't understand. Kingdom of Royal Magnar. Do I do I look like someone that could work for the magnate? I mean, you're losing them here. They're they're suddenly super suspicious of you. I mean, you brought up the magnate. Are you a cop? Me. Uh, Hello, fellow halflings. I mean, they're <laughs> like, "Do you work for the government?" And you're like, "What's the government?" And they're like, "Oh, I don't know what the fucking okay. Is. All right, god damn it. You might not know what the magnate is, but they would assume that everyone knows what the magnate is. Magnate, uh, how do they uh, work? <laughs> wow. You want to talk about Twitch Prime next? Yeah. Wow, that was good. Cart nuts. <laughs> so anyway, let's let's. Uh... I pull up my Men in Black memory eraser and erase that. does that not happen. Nope. Moment of the conversation. Nope. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, listen, you can tell by uh, the way I've been talking to you that, uh, and I use my thieves cant again, as I'm talking to where Docker can understand me, right? Right. So I'm still talking, kind of stumbling through my words, but I very clearly show in thieves cant that I am a rogue that can be trusted by their group yeah so i mean one of the guys the is like mate. stop stop normally we could trust anyone who approaches us like that but you could be a white hat sent to infiltrate us you know let me uh, ask you a question okay we're i really feel like you uh couldn't possibly fit in with us we're he leans in closely don't tell anyone 
but we're soldiers on a mission to liberate this country. Revolutionaries, the sons of liberty. Okay? You're going to hear a lot about us over the next couple of days. Oh, I've heard about you already. All right. Let me, let me say, government. let me, You're let me tell you something, Spoonik. They were suspicious before, but they are now on checking to see if murdering everyone else in this bar is going to work mm. out for them. Like, what? you could see people reaching for weapons, someone standing up and moving towards Brienne Leaf. There are people that are moving behind Daka. The guy, the guy is just like, oh, you've heard of us before. Tell, uh, yeah. tell me more about this. I, I've just heard that, uh, I've heard that you're revolutionaries and who did you hear this from just talk about town you know you you travel all over this country and you hear whispers of the organization i've heard the name sons of liberty and not much more i'm actually honored to meet you so he like gestures for his gestures toward his dudes <clears throat> and the guys that were moving towards the bar with brianne leave suddenly like take their hands off their hilts and just start ordering drinks casually Daka will like let go of his daggers under his cloak <laughs> everybody's slowly standing down I don't think you're right to join our organization why is that? but I'll say this if you meet people like you people who you can trust you should tell them about us send them our way well, but if I do that, and then they meet you and say that they've heard about you, you'll get all uh, antsy. We might, again. we might. So but if they make us a little less nervous than you, we might uh, accept them into our ranks. But this is literally, I just did what you're telling me to do. I know, and everyone but we, we just don't trust you. Our weapons. All I'm saying is no matter what happens, don't tell anyone about us. Absolutely but you not. just told me to tell people about you. <laughs> Don't tell anyone about us for whatever reason. I'm so confused. Uh, listen. Listen. Let's just get everything straight right now. I'm saying I'm interested in your organization. Not because I'm some secret agent or some blah blah stuff like that. Because that's just stupid and not real life. All I know is that I like what you guys have going on. And I wanted to get you to know you better. I've got a friend here with me. He's a lot bigger than us, as you can see. So, you know, he helps us serve as the muscle of my two-man operation that I've got going on. Do I remember? What is that operation? Was said? What is that operation? Making money, kicking ass, and taking names. And it seems like you guys would want someone like us to hang out with you. Have you heard of the salt mines? That was us. Aye, I so so like <clears throat> the boss leans forward and says, "I heard of the salt mines. That was the two of you then." Yeah, I heard it was uh, four or five powerful adventurers, one of whom went mad. Well, you know how stories are. One person says one thing, and then they tell another and another. And next thing you know, there's five or six people going crazy and killing people. Listen, my friend Doc and I, we were there. We know what happened. They probably made up. People like to. Embellish. They don't like to be shown up. Imagine being sending adventurers, guild, adventurers guild, oh, card carrying lackeys in there to be shown up by a halfling and a thiefling. Listen, don't even talk to me about a fucking adventuring guild, you son of a bitch. You guys don't even know how much work I put into having an adventuring guild, like bureaucracy, hierarchy, background checks, the politics of it, and you guys have never even visited a goddamn adventuring guild. Not once. You haven't even checked in. You're just like, fuck the adventuring guild. We're going to be union breaking skanks. <laughs> oh my god, I don't even know why I bothered. All right, look, Spoonik, make a persuasion check. You need to convince these people that you actually are cool. All right. I know yeah. things have been a little confusing so far. Their <laughs> me their, if their messages are coming across confused and mixed, that is intentional on my part. Okay. 16. Okay. It's, not bad. it's actually 20, because uh, DACA is giving you aid. Oh, all right. Okay, cool. <clears throat> I don't need a proficiency for that. No. I'll allow it anyway. I feel like you're very helpful here with the whole... I'll allow it. 
Cool. Uh, so the boss leans forward and says, all right, look. What we're about to do is strike a great blow for the Sons of Freedom. Truly grand one. I'm you listening. seem... You seem like a persuasive fellow with your companion. Someone who could be respected by the community. And someone who can move around freely. Yeah, I can do that. So let me tell you what's going to happen. Over the next few days, you're going to hear stories about us and the great blows that we have struck for the liberty of Royal Magnar. You want to join our organization. Spread the word. Repeat what you hear. Bring it to everybody that you can. And when the kingdom comes for you, escape, get out. And if you can prove yourself and we hear about you spreading these stories, we'll come to you again. Hey, Pete, do sure I remember you want me to tell people about you? Oh, yes. <clears throat> I know really? that things were a little confusing, but let me be clear. I absolutely want you to spread rumors that the Sons of Freedom was involved in what's about to happen. And what's about to happen? Don't worry about it. You'll know when it happens. Hmm. Last and time you don't sorry, go ahead. Last time we were here, when I dangled the dude out the window, did he give me any specifics about what the one was? Nope. <clears throat> or like anything I could drop to be like I basically want to. The only thing you were like, about to drop was him out the window. Yeah. Basically, what I want to do is like try to convince them that I'm the, the one, or like drop a hint that I'm the one, but like yes. be like, no, I'm. Totally it's already not been the shot one, down but... here, though. You guys have legitimately said yeah. I'm not. The what, one. What's the uh, what's the leader? Uh, uh, I want to ask the leader his name. <laughs> he leans forward and says, "I have many names." Well, how would I get in touch with you if I need to? Who would I ask for? Let's see. I see. Caleb Naracult. Is that with a C or a K? The Caleb is with the C. The cult is with the K. <laughs> a Caleb Colt Nip. What is it? Narrow cult. Jesus Christ. Narrow. He's like, are you writing Fuck this down? Me. Are you taking note? Are you taking notes of a criminal narrow, motherfucking conspiracy? Narrow cult. <laughs> He's like digging into God his hand with a dagger, <laughs> like crossing it out multiple times. I'm trying to make notes. All right. Um... The wire was so slow to start with, but it became fucking incredible <laughs> in the second half of season one. And all throughout all of the other seasons, this shit was wild. All right, so you, you 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 say that I'll I'll know it was you when it happened, but I I feel like I need a little bit more to go on. I mean, look to the lots east. Of things I've seen lots of things happen, lots of things that were almost too incredible and too incredible to be true. So how what we're about do to I do, know... no one will believe. A truly great blow for the freedom of the Royal Magnar. I mean, I've seen, you know, a little girl offered to a dragon for a dragon birth and the salt mines and Gleema of the Western Gate. So one of the one of the halflings is forward and he's like, You know about Gleemo over the Western Gate? Yes, I do. Do you know about Gleemo? Yes, I do. I pull out my little pendant that i made yeah so he like he like taps his pipe out and he's like oh shit i didn't realize he actually got that thing going good for him have you seen the fungin i don't even know what that is kid oh it's really fun like i met him while i was doing some trickster training in the magnar he is a trickster no he's not he's a he's a very very bad wizard he's like really bad and I'm not a kid. I'm I'm 80 years old. All right, Sonny. <sighs> I think you at this know, point we walk know. in. All right. <laughs> you walk in and they immediately hush up and they're just like, we're done. <clears throat> I say in so, did you see that Wyvern's out. game? Caught it the other day then. And, and everybody, all the halflings start talking to each other. What was he thinking? He's always trying to walk it in. 
Uh, Brianne Leaf turns to you, Kelly, and you're gonna be like, ah, more travelers. We only have a few rooms left. But if you're willing to pay a premium, I can get you a room together. Or perhaps you're just here for a meal. Um, I, in Orkish, I'll, I'll, I'll say to, um, Agram, like, um, you do the talking in this timeline. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I only speak common in Elvin. Yeah, we'll, uh, let's say this in common. Yeah, we'll pick up a, uh, if you got a room of doubles or uh, if you got two separate rooms, is either works. One, is this the NPC that I can't see dwarves? No, that was in no, the... No, uh, that's all the way back in Bondurant. I was like, that would be amazing. Yeah, no, that was, that was the shit. Was whatever. Uh, so she says, right, uh, we've only got one double room left and no singles. Or take it. It's not that big of a deal. We're just going to be here for the night. I apologize. We're not normally this busy. Oh, it's fine. We're just passing through, headed off towards uh, Spike Nakuso. Uh, so she's just like, oh, heading to the fight at Kuso then. Mercenaries looking to join up? Yeah, we're gonna uh, see what, uh, see what everybody's got on offer up there. Heard there's some good money up that way. So, one of the halflings steps up, uh, and heads to the bar, and he's just like, did I hear you say you were going to the fighting at Kuso? Maybe. It's tough road. Hear that there's bandits and the like. Could be attacks? Maybe you'd like to reconsider that. There are certainly safer places in the Empire. You could get paid a decent daily wage. I, sort of, I, I look down at, at, the, at the halfling, and I, and I say in very broken common, <laughs> Puny. He's <laughs> crashing your head. He doesn't like you. <laughs> um, I don't like you either. Yeah, he's like, well, I don't choose where the, uh, where the wars break out. But uh, I'll keep uh, so you, you, <laughs> Daka and um, and Finley see him cross his fingers behind his back, and this guy goes, "Yeah, I don't choose where the war breaks out either," with a complete straight face. Then he uncrosses his fingers. I, I, I says, nudge, I nudge Daka. Mm -hmm. and like, just nod my head as a drink. Yeah, the rest of the halflings are all cracking up, and one of them tells a joke so that they have some cover after the laugh. So everyone starts laughing, and he's like, and then she said, that's where my pants are, and everybody laughs again. <laughs> uh, I have Daka. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, well, I mean, we with any luck, I won't see you again, friend. I'm not going Kuso way, that's for sure. Well, you know, good luck to you. Good luck to you. I'd hate to see you again on the road. I want to, I mean, we have a pretty good idea. In Orcas, um, I want to turn to uh, Kelly. You recognize any of these little fuckers from the, uh, the canyon? You recognize all of them. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, I, I turned to him and I... Okay. <laughs> that one, that one, that yeah. one. I mean, you you personally killed this one, Agram. That's right in front yeah. of you. Oh, I did? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, well, then when you know, Kelly goes puny, you know, in, internally, I'm like, yeah, you're right. <laughs> uh, so, um, I'll, I'll turn back to the bar lady and I'll be like, drink. All right. In common. She, yeah, uh, put she puts a drink out in front of you. Yeah, I'm going to get a drink too. I'll put some okay. coin on the table to pay for everything. Uh, she says two gold pieces, meals, drinks, rooms. Yeah, no problem. Meat. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, food, whatever. <clears throat> I, think uh, I think we wait out until they start to leave, right? Because last time they left because there wasn't anything interesting happening. Uh, so they don't leave this time. Uh, you, you keep waiting and waiting and they don't leave. Uh, Brienne Leaf puts out a uh, stewed sausage with some bitter cheese melted into it uh, and brings around another tankard of cider for the four of you. <laughs> Not collectively, of course. You know, she puts two in front of me. Mm -hmm. sure, sure, sure. <clears throat> but everybody gets stewed sausage and, and some really, like, awful cheese. Like, maybe it's gone bad or something? Or maybe it's just supposed to be that. It's just French. Uh, and then, you what know. What is that weird stinky cheese something burger? There's a... Uh, Limburger. Limburger. There's a Limburger. bunch of them, but yeah. 
playing the French. She she leans in towards Kelly and uh, Agram and says, "You know, if you're looking for work as an innkeeper, pretty good about hearing things around town. If you're looking for safer work than going to the front lines, I could direct you to something." I like turn to Agram and I say, in all cases, like just translate or something. I don't know. <laughs> There. All right, so I'll, uh, I'll, uh, into, you know, turn to, uh, you know, Kelly and say something in Orcish. Just, it, it's probably just, you know, ah, oh, the, the, the weather's pretty good today. But like, all right, my buddy, you know, turn back to her in common. All right, my buddy's, uh, he's interested. What, uh, what rumors you got? Well, neither of you appear to be particularly, uh, magically inclined, if I might say so. But perhaps. I mean, I'm not have... hiding my. <laughs> Yeah. I, like I didn't make any 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 ways to hide my uh, clericness. I don't know. I mean, you you wear a holy symbol, but you're also wearing full plate and have yeah. multiple swords and ogre gauntlets. True. Yes. You are you are not the traditional go around and heal yeah. people kind of cleric. Yeah. I mean, true. we're not uh, we're not wizard types, but we picked up some tricks, some of the uh, arcane tricks over our uh, years of experience. Well, there's a rumor that the cat behind the broken arrow on the north side of town is. A wizard who was polymorphed by one of his enemies and can't uh, unpolymorph himself he keeps evading everyone who tries to catch him. There's supposedly a good price being paid if you can catch him and uh, unpolymorph him. To the south yep. of here, there's a pretty well established gentleman. I do business with him from time to time for mutton. Uh, he's got some sort of water flow problem on his property looking for someone to investigate uh like a hidden basement he discovered can't find any is that adventures the, is that the same guy that we yes. helped out before okay. yep yeah <laughs> no not interested well the kingdom would be amiss if i didn't mention that you could of course try to go to the capital and join the army yeah, we've we, uh, got accosted on our way uh, up from up south here by some people trying to get us to enlist. I see. Did it go well? I mean, we're, you know, we'll consider it, but, uh, you know, we, we've kind of got some prospects up near Cuso. Might try and, you know, hit up to our Dwarven lands, maybe visit some family or something, but, you know, we'll see how it goes. But uh, yeah, we appreciate the leads anyway. Might might look into this cat business and see uh see what uh, what's up with all these little is it a party or something? All the little guys. I don't know. I think that they might be, you know, I don't want to judge or anything, but I think that they might be criminals. Uh, I mean, you know, I... some really suspicious guys came in to meet them. Like that mm. tiefling over there. I don't like the look of him. Yeah, uh, tieflings are weird. He doesn't laugh right. Well, I mean, have you have you heard Tief or have you heard Tieflings and Halflings laugh? I don't think any of us right, but no good. Trying to avoid them as much as possible. Appreciate the warning, though. <clears throat> okay. Uh, the Halflings will continue to discuss basically total bullshit, uh, recounting past crimes, but all in thieves' cant. So it just sounds like normal activities. Uh, talking about going and fixing a roof. Uh, helping a neighbor with a safe. And uh, right about the time that the storm starts rolling in that night, they all call it and head up to bed. Uh, <clears throat> apparently your drinks, your meals, and your rooms are all on the Halfling's tab, however. So the two of you I don't have to pay anything. For them. Right. Yeah, no, they're good. Okay. That's what I thought. Nobody's at Cazador's level of racism. I'm from okay. Alabama. Challenge accept them. <laughs> yeah. Daco is just like... What happens if you don't sleep? Uh, oh, you start you taking to... levels of exhaustion. Yeah, and you don't, yeah. you don't regain all your shit or whatever. I mean, but... what, is exhaustion just like... You think you start taking the certain you levels of it. Right? I mean, the I first level is you get disadvantage on all skill checks, which is really fucking horrendous. Yeah, no, yeah, it's yeah. it's always worth sleeping. The, the later levels are also equally bad. 
I think Warlock's the only ones that can circumvent sleeping in a couple of ways, but that's, I think that's the only ones. I'm going to... Is there a way to sleep? Not like... To not get any penalties? Because I'm already full health. I have all my spells. But like to stay alert enough to... I mean, set a no. watch. That's pretty much really the only way to... Kind there's of no way to not up. sleep and also avoid the penalties for not there's, sleeping. There's no like half sleep. No. There's no like four hours. You're or not an elf. There is there is a spell called alert that yeah. will wake you when something happens, but um, that yeah, yeah, we have to set that up. Um, I'm assuming the um, we should say the room's a double. It's got just like two smaller beds in it for Kelly and I. Yeah. Yeah. Then uh, I suggest Kelly that we do a we set a watch. You know, we alternate. Yeah, I'll go first. I'm ready in full armor. Finley Just and Daka sure. end up in the same room that Finley and Arvok had ended up in. A really nice suite. Uh, kind of like honeymoon. He kicks in. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, right. I don't have anything else to do. So yeah, Kelly said he'll go first. So I'll um have a kip. And uh, he can pick me up whenever, and then mm -hmm. just to be safe. Yeah, and I'll just keep watch for un un undo noises and like people sneaking around. Okay. Uh, like we already know these guys kind of like to sneak around. So you you are not talk to me about how you and Finley are doing this. Is somebody not sleeping, or you both not sleeping? What's the deal? Uh, I mean, if you want, uh, we could do it in shifts. I mean, if if he wants to stay up, I can sleep for a little bit and then trade. Probably doing watches, yeah. Yeah. So we're like doing watches, but in different rooms. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, I want you guys to make constitution checks to see that you don't trigger exhaustion. Hey, everybody? Or... No, just the two that are staying on watch all night. Mm -hmm. Uh, oh, are they they staying up? I mean, yeah, I'm, I mean I are this is like a partial thing, right? Because they're kind okay. of getting a long rash, but not completely. Yeah. Uh, no, you're both <laughs> perfectly fine. Uh, it's a little tough, but you guys have stayed up on watch before, uh, and you know, breaking it up, at least getting some napping in. The halflings get up early before the sun rises, uh, and they're all like piling out of the inn, ignoring breakfast. They aren't even like. They leave a bag of gold for Bran Leaf, uh, that's probably way more than what they need to pay, and just pile out. I want to sneak as much as I can after them. Okay. Finley, what do you do? I want to. Hmm. I do want to integrate myself as much as I can with them, but. Can I be on their periphery? You mean you want to you want to just walk like you're one of them? Yeah. You're like I hello fellow kids. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean not so much like a fellow kids thing but like uh you know, hey, we talked earlier and I told you I was interested in what's going on and you know, maybe I can spread the word better if I learn a little bit more. Plus, uh, it wouldn't be super awkward to explain why you're following them. <laughs> right. At that point. Like, I mean, maybe what if you were to follow them, but not make it completely unobvious that you're not trying to follow them? You know what I mean? Yeah, like, stealth checks. Yeah, Daka, yeah. let's start with your stealth check. Well, I'm not being as stealth. Like, I'm going to be stealthy, but. Right. But you're attempting to avoid yeah. notice, which is exactly what stealth is. Yeah. Uh, this isn't stealth insofar as, you know, you're like moving quietly through a forest but you are yeah. trying to urban stealth okay 16. they don't appear to have noticed you you move quietly behind them uh it's not like there's a lot of people out at this hour finley uh i'm gonna need you to make a straight charisma check to see if you can just blend in here and be accepted okay da, 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 da. wow wow yeah. so someone says something initially uh and then the boss just kind of looks over uh and then halfling says if he wants to come with us he can come with us we've warned him of the consequences but he seems like he is a true freedom fighter and everybody chuckles at that 
I chuckle with them. They chuckle even more when you start chuckling. I chuckle even more. Just makes it incredibly easy for me to follow them. <laughs> yeah, very easy. I mean, they're not trying to hide at all. Uh, they buy a set of wagons at the edge of town. Uh, they buy four wagons and an appropriate number of donkeys to carry them. Uh, and then someone helps Finley up into the wagon. Like they reach their hand down and like pull you up into the back of it. Nice. Daka, what's your plan now? Can I mission impossible grab one of the bottom of one of the carts? Uh, you know what? Athletics? Let's... Yeah, it's going to be athletics to hang there for the entire journey. <laughs> Oh, a 21 i am proficient holy in shit i can't believe you guys are pulling this off but yeah like daka Boom. rolls underneath between two wagons that are going by he rolls between them and then like oh, pulls himself up and then just kind of locks himself down in there and just just kind of like cradles himself this is like the wagon before the commercial by. break in the tv show like the camera goes underneath and like the music rises and then she just is like just see like my face come up underneath the cart we are actually pretty close to commercial break i want to ask what Smash happens cut to me and agram having a quiet breakfast <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's like a, a vegetable soup you just, you just hear you just, you know, oh these eggs are pretty good huh? mm, yeah, mm, squeezed mm, orange yeah, juice yeah, just yeah. just some just grunting early morning grunting between two just you know warriors just, soldiers. <laughs> just, it's like anytime dudes hang out like you don't need to talk to communicate it's just grunts and you know mm, mm, mm. takes a bite looks up mm, mm. <laughs> we're just two friends <laughs> Uh, Sitting okay. five feet apart. Because yeah, it's exactly. Cool. No eye contact. <laughs> five feet apart. We both go for the salt at the same time, and I'm just like, no, no, you first, actually. No. <laughs> you're like reaching for the salt, and your hands touch, and you're both like recoil a little bit, and then you're like, <laughs> we'll be back from a, uh, I wouldn't say a commercial break, but. I'll break nonetheless in about eight minutes, which will probably be more like 10. Uh, enjoy the break music and then enjoy the art.